expected uh, the stuff today and uh, Dr. Shamil Khan and the dear participants and warm good afternoon uh, we are in the third lecture of the online interdisciplinary lecture series organized by uh, research club of english and history department for the formal welcome note and to introduce the chief guest i invite uh, Ms. Sangeeta K, Assistant Professor, Department of English. So respected guest of the day, Dr. Ajmal Khan, friends, participants, a warm good evening to one and all. Today for the session titled, Poetry of the Other, New Writings in English, we have with us Dr. Ajmal Khan Ati, a bilingual poet and activist who writes in English as well as in Malayalam. Her poetry speaks volumes about the mental agony born out of the minority feeling instilled on the Muslims in India. Though a protest, pathos more than anger is what one, what one could detect in her poems. Her poetry forms a good record of the trauma of the times too. The Mapula Versus is his latest publication. Musibat a one-line story collection in Malayalam published in 2017 and My Tolerant Nation that came out the same year, 2017, are his other publications. His poems have featured in uh, Muse India magazine, Indian Cultural Forum, Ignite South Asia, among others. He's also a Charles Wallace Fellow at uh, School of Oriental and African Studies, University of London after completing his PhD from Tata Institute of Social Sciences. He is currently teaching at Ashoka University, Delhi. Dr. Ajmal is here to speak about the new trends in English writing in India and also will read from his book, The Mapula Verses. So let me on behalf of the organizers of the event, uh, welcome Dr. Ajmal Khan to this event. I also extend my warm welcome to all the participants of the event. Hope you will have a nice time here. Thank you. So, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, I would uh, like to thank uh, the research club as well as the Department of History and English uh, and also the organizers of uh, uh, this particular uh, lecture series. Uh, of course, I mean, uh, all of us are in a time that you know uh, we have not seen uh, or the human history have never ever seen uh, 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 all of us are uh, in a lockdown uh, since uh, months now I mean of course not only us but uh, elsewhere everybody uh, in the world uh, yeah so i mean so we are kind of uh, trying to overcome some of these uh, using online platforms and you know so on anyway so uh, uh, my idea uh, is just to briefly talk about uh, indian english literature briefly and i'll just uh, also look at what is this other literature of the other that uh, that was given in the title uh, and also i'll uh, talk about some of the uh, writers predominantly uh, uh, uh Bahujan english writers who are comparatively new uh, uh, i'm not sure how many of you uh, particularly uh, students who uh, study literature here uh, 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 i'm not sure how many of you will be familiar of the kind of work that i'm kind of going to talk about uh, so I'm uh, waiting for that as well. And then, of course, uh, I would like to read uh, some poems from my own new book, uh, uh, The Mopla Verses. So that's the brief plan that I have. I hope I have around uh, 30 minutes to, to do this. Uh, and uh, if any of you have any questions, any comments, uh, please do so uh, in the chat box. So I'm going to be able to look at them and uh, respond to that either uh, together at the end or uh, sometime in between. Yeah, that's fine. All good. Yes, it's okay. Yes, it's okay. okay. It's okay, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah. 
so i would also love uh, if uh, if you guys kind of talk to me and interact to me uh, you you do can use uh, uh, chat box uh, to write whatever comes to your mind and also if you want to answer you could unmute yourself and speak up yeah okay so uh, now uh, what comes to your mind uh, when we say uh, in uh, writing in english in india or indian writing in english i'm sure uh, there are uh, st students who uh, who have a paper on indian english writing some of i mean some of you of course would have this particular paper indian english writing what what comes to your mind when i say writing in english from india are there some names that comes to your mind some novels some poems some people or some work that you have guys have read kamala das okay who else ya parayna ellarku manasilavunnadallo le yes yes sir Ah, okay. yes thanks thank yeah. you are audible okay 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 so kamla das kamla das is the only answer you guys can speak up okay feel free to aga shahid ali okay B brilliant aga shahid ali rashdi sarojini naidu who else who else i'm curious you know rk narayanan nasim sikel okay okay who else who else i'm waiting nehru is this jawala nehru nasim sikel yeah yes tagore yeah tagore yes okay anita nayar okay yes anita nayar of course anyone else rk narayanan amrita pritham yes okay yeah so uh, 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 girish karnad of course yes yeah so uh, we have a uh, india being a colony some others are also writing uh, ashok kumar okay yes torudath okay yeah so you know uh, 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 india india being one of the earliest colonies uh, of the british uh, we do have a very strong or an early tradition of people writing in english yeah so writing in english uh, the early names or the early people who wrote in english were predominantly people who were part of the elites in india now those who lived in the metros for example those who lived in 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 uh, in delhi in mumbai in madras uh, in bangalore in calcutta so this this was the constituency that started writing in english and this was also a a, a cream elite who had family affiliations uh, to the british or they kind of educated in the universities in the west for example uh, uh, two two universities in that sense oxford cambridge or otherwise some european universities or in in america so uh, this was the early early writing in english predominantly yeah so the early writing in english be it novel be it poetry be it uh, uh, even no non fiction in that sense not only fiction but the english writing predominantly in the early times uh, 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 was mostly uh, by this particular elite uh, who lived in the indian metros or who 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 came from these super elite uh, families of india uh, who were also also uh, constituted mostly from uh, upper caste communities let's say uh, let's say predominantly brahmins yeah and in within that again we do also have for example if, uh, if i look at the names that you guys have given to me apart from anita nayar uh i think there was sarojini naidu all the others are men yeah so this 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 was one of the uh, peculiar uh, character of the early early writing uh, in english uh, that came out from india yeah now this is uh, uh, 
similar in poetry this is similar in the novel genre this is similar even in the non fiction work which came from india okay now uh, tell me uh, some of the poets uh, some of the indian english poets that you guys know specifically apart from let's say nasim asikal nasim asikal's name is here apart from that i can see aga shahid ali of course a poet apart from that aga shahid ali lived hardly in india he lived mostly in the us yes tell me uh, uh, tell me tell me other names uh, in indian english poetry uh, that you guys have read uh, uh, kamala das okay okay kamala das is one and i can think of tego here i can also think of uh, uh, nasim asikal apart from that i can i mean i haven't got any poets uh, from india ak ramanujan okay okay ak ramanujan who else who else amrita pritam yes tagore of course i i, I was talking about, uh, 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 about tagore yes 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 ar par pat sarthi okay yes more names please meena kandasami okay okay any more arun kuladkar arvindu mahapatra is this uh, okay 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 good 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 yeah so we have a range of uh, indian english poets here now even within the indian english poets uh, of course we know arun kuladkar we know dilip chitre we know nasim asikal we know adil jussawala we know uh, ak ramanujan now now a range of these people are also uh, from uh, similar characteristics for example most of them uh, predominantly are from bombay actually so there was this bombay poets uh, tradition where you know a lot of indian indian english poetry came from bombay uh, uh, i mean the this this circle of indian english poetry was also uh, predominantly uh, 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 by the poets who came from bombay who, who lived in the city who wrote from bombay yeah so now the character that i was talking about so uh, the upper caste uh, male the dominantly brahmin writers who came from these metros uh, were from from kolkata from bombay from 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 madras from bangalore from so on so that is also applicable uh, for writing in poetry now what what was the content uh, of their poems what was the the subject matter of their poetry what was the subject matter of their novel what was the subject matter of their other genre of fiction something that we will look at in a later point of the talk okay so this is the first layer of writing in english from india which came from a particular class also a particular caste also Uh, more or less uh, a particular gender uh, 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 men yeah so now that was the early of course we do know that writing in english is also a privileged activity in comparison to writing in the vernacular languages for example writing in malayalam writing in bengali writing in marathi uh, is different uh, uh, in terms of the ability to ability and the capability to acquire uh, english as a english as an elite colonial uh, language and being able to write in that language was something uh, which was quite different and unique in that point point in time yeah now uh, let's also look at now for example when i say uh, so this is the first foundation that i want to uh, kind of uh, uh, establish that you know the 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 foundation or the early writing from uh, from india in english came from all this particular very minority section 
uh, who were of course were part of the ruling class ruling caste in that sense yeah now at the same time this is also also the same time uh, we have a very rich tradition of writing by lower caste uh, men and women both in across the country in vernacular languages for example writing in malayalam writing in marathi writing in bengali writing uh, in telugu in that sense yeah so we we also have a very vibrant tradition of people writing predominantly people who came from lower caste groups writing in vernacular languages about caste about religion about gender about everyday oppression and suppression and power structures and so on now when i say this uh, are you able to think of uh, writers for example let's say telugu writers or marathi writers or even malayalam writers for example who did talked about inequality social structures caste ethnicity gender uh, sexuality some of these things are you able to think of some names for me yeah i mean of course kamala das we know we know we know apart from kumar nashan of oh, oh, yeah okay kumar nashan okay all right yeah who else of course kamala das did write about uh, i mean one of the early feminist writings uh, uh, from india uh, in english of course come from kamala das poigai lapachan okay thank you thank you for the om prakash valmiki okay yes now poigai lapachan uh, wrote in malayalam om prakash valmiki uh, wrote in in hindi uh, who else do i have some more names we have a lot of people in even in malayalam who wrote i mean for example we have tagari uh, who write about about many of chandu menon okay okay yes that's that's right i'm also assuming that we also have a lot of i mean i mean at least some people who are outside uh, kerala so yes few people from outside kerala sorry yes there are few people outside kerala okay all right yeah, yeah yes yes so i am kind of assuming that you know battadri padu okay yes i'm also kind of waiting some non malayali names in this sugata kumari yes thank you fm shinde yes yeah so so you know uh, we we uh, the vernacular languages uh, regional languages of course i mean uh, regional periyar periyar of course you mean periyar bardiyar okay okay yes volga okay okay sharan kumar limbale brilliant yes okay so i mean i am somebody who have lived in maharashtra for last uh, uh, i mean let's say i spent around a decade living in bombay uh, so i mean my i mean my talk will also have a marathi flavor in terms of the writers and the writers of course uh, based in bombay and also writing in marathi so i am thankful to the person who mentioned sharan kumar limbale's name sharavan kumari devi okay tn sarada lakshmi okay in telugu okay thank you thank you thank you uh, uh, so much for these names i i don't want to take names of people who are suggesting these but uh, uh, thank you for this uh, range of people now now uh, at the time when we had the initial writing that was happening in english we also had a similar writing that is happening in almost all vernacular languages i mean of course vernacular languages were the tradition of writing in the vernacular language is much older than english yeah now at the same time uh, when most of the early english writers when they write in english we also have a have a range of writers who are writing from multiple regional languages in bengali in telugu in malayalam in tamil in marathi in odia you know so we have this range of people who are contributing uh, towards literary imagination in the country uh, 
during that time now predominantly many of them many of them did come from lower caste groups or the larger category of dalit bahujan communities yeah now they did of course uh, they did talked about caste they did talk about the oppressions they did talked about gender they did talked about many other uh layers of socio economic and political exclusions that uh, on an everyday life now uh this is uh now of course in that also what what do we have is that we also have a range of specifically dalit and bahujan writers writing in their own languages for example uh we have raja dule if there is anybody from maharashtra who would know uh daja dulles work uh, which are now being translated by people like jerry pinto uh, there are people like uh, uh, urmila pawar there are uh, brilliant poets like namdev dasal whose poem uh, translated i will be reading today uh, in the later part of the talk uh, we have daya pawar we have urmila pawar we have uh, baburao begul we have manoranjan byapari we have a have a range of people who both come from elite groups oh, yeah. and also from the lower caste ex untouchable communities and the dalit bahujan communities who are right in this particular time joy joy you need to mute the president the emperor is saying is there also a question about the stability and the new discussion of joy of the discussion of the new process is why was here service for chocolate ha thank you thank you i think okay so uh uh the second layer of writers that i was talking about is a range of writers who came from regional vernacular languages now these writers of course did came from both privileged local elites as well as from lower caste lower caste ex untouchable groups as well and most of them of course did also both lived in the cities in the villages for example you have if you look at most of the dalit writers in maharashtra who were writing then during that time you would see most of them are migrants who have come to work in the in the textiles mills uh, in bombay and then uh, kind of attracted to the kind of politics that is going around in the city getting into the trade union politics writing about that in marathi now what we have in malayalam for example we 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 also have a range of people for example there is tagari there is there is number of others who both lived uh, in the small towns in kerala also in the villages uh, and who did write about uh, their lives their own surroundings so this is the range of initial writings that we have had uh, in the vernacular languages in the regional languages both by the local elites as well as uh the ex untouchables and the other dalit bahujan communities so now tell me uh uh, uh what are what are some of the text what are some of the books what are some of the for example what are some of the short stories what are some of the novels what are some of the poetry that talk about uh, caste oppression in the country that you have en encountered first time in your reading in english or even in another language as well tell me some some names that you can think of outcast outcast by whom who wrote outcast ke khairun nisa khairun nisa who wrote outcast any others can also answer sharan kumar limbale ya yeah? sharan kumar limbale okay okay who else who the untouchable who wrote the untouchable fulkraj anand sorry fulkraj anand yes yes 
so i i now have outcast by sharan kumar limbale and i have untouchables by mulkra janand how i become a hindu kancha alaya it's not a fiction actually uh it's not a fiction work i mean it's not a novel it's not a short story it's not a it's not a uh fiction in that sense i would i would i would love to hear some of the fiction work jothan bama's work which bama i mean if you guys be much more specific i will also i mean it will be helpful for me to understand as well as for the others as well kari ku okay टेगोर एक्चुअली do any of you remember this particular short story by tagore uh, that talked about a lower caste women no you guys don't remember okay growing up after kr me and seming elephants okay that's all, that's also not a fiction work i want fiction I mean, I'm I'm glad that Chandala. Yes, yes. I'm I was looking at looking for Chandala. Yes, and and and. Anyway, yeah. So we do have a range of people uh, here. We do have a range of uh, writers uh, and their work now. Uh, some of them are, of course, uh, uh, not uh, fiction, uh, and most of them are, uh, of course, fiction. And we have. Oh yeah, of course. Malguri Days by R K Narayan. R K Narayan, sorry. Yeah. So uh, you know, uh, now treatment of caste uh, was something that we see even from the early writing that happened, both in English and in uh, vernacular languages. Yeah. So uh, people uh, did talked about uh, 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 how do caste work. Uh, as a system of exploitation and oppression within indian society uh, both in english as well as in the vernacular uh, literature now uh, what we see is that uh, uh, there is a difference for example uh, when tego talk talk about uh, the lower caste or the ex untouchable women or when mulkraj anand talk, talked about Uh, his characters, or his depiction of his characters, or R K Narayan and talk about, uh, uh, you know, we do we do kind of see an an organic difference from many uh, writers who write in the regional languages. Yeah. Now uh, there is a organic difference. Uh, that has been observed in the writings by uh, people who did come from for example do not having a brutal experience of caste for example i mean when i talk to talk about namdev dasal later i will come to that uh, now there is a organic difference uh, between the people who wrote about caste from both in english as well as in the vernacular languages uh Uh, uh uh there was a difference in their treatment of some of these questions uh from the the people the writers who came from these particular caste groups for example by this i mean when namdev dasal write about caste or his own life his everyday life that is quite different from what is tagore talking about an ex untouchable women uh, that he see in his surrounding yeah when arkana narayanan narayan or when mulkraj anand or salman rushdi or amida ghosh or even arundhati roy uh, 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 write about 
or when they treat some of these characters when they treat some of these subject matters uh, they organically differs from what babu rao bey will write uh, what sharan kumar limbale's uh, uh, world of literature is or uh, what namdev dasal write or what manoranjan byavari write uh, you know so i'm trying to argue that there is a there is an organic difference in the way in which how how both people who wrote in english and people who wrote in the vernacular languages who come from relatively less brutal experiences of caste and other hierarchies in the country uh, radically differs from their treatment of this subject from the people from the writers who wrote about it uh, uh, who themselves come from those uh, backgrounds and those organic experiences i hope uh, this is kind of clear okay now if there are questions about this or if there are disagreements about this uh, you guys can uh, 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 kind of write in the chat box so i was first of all trying to establish and try and give you a, a, a very uh, small glimpse of what was the writing in english like in india in the initial time and at the same time what was the writing about socio economic and other expressions and oppressions in the country both in english and in other languages yeah and now i am going to come into uh, the new writing that i kind of call is the new writing in english in india yeah now this is also the writing of the other that i kind of call now this is the writing by newly educated uh, people who come from this particular caste groups uh, for example somebody did mention about uh, uh, meena kandasamy here yeah now meena kandasamy is an example of that uh, how many of you have heard about hansta swans shekar hansta swans shekar chetan bhagat okay i am not asking about chetan bhagat sorry how many of you have heard okay so i i now kind of going to talk about a range of uh, uh, new writers uh, who come from dalit bahujan communities who do now write in english for example uh, we don't have a lot of uh, for example dalit adivasi uh, bahujan people who are writing in english we don't have that somebody is writing badra log okay okay all right so uh, 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 you know i am kind of going to mention some some names uh, which will be familiar for example when i say uh, anis salim i hope some of you will be familiar with the writings of anis salim the small town c and also the other some of the other work how many of you know anis salim here since i mean i'm asking this question also because uh, we have a predominant mallu community here jit tail yes all right i mean i'm not i'm not i'm not going to talk about chetan bhagat of course because you guys already know know about them you guys also already know about jit tail anis salim is quite famous okay vanity bag okay yes yes yeah so i mean these are these these are uh, uh very peculiar uh, new uh, writers who are contributing into the new writing in english uh, uh, one of them is of course meena kandasamy and the other name that i want to say is hansda swans shegar hansda is a uh, doctor who sits uh, in the chota nagpur plateau uh, in uh, in the sandal parganas in the state of jharkhand uh, he is a medical doctor and he also won uh, if i am correct he won uh, his first uh, book won the uh, sahitya academy uh, yuva puraskar which uh, sahitya academy give uh, 
for new uh, young uh, promising writers who who write in a range of indian languages as well as in english so hansdas uh, 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 small uh, book of course his his first novel was called uh, the mysterious alignment of uh, rupi vaski you guys can just google those th these names and i'll also be able to give some of these names later i mean and of course i don't have a powerpoint here to kind of sh show these names or or uh, these people their uh, faces now uh, hansda uh, hansda predominantly write about the adivasi communities in the country he write in english if you just google hansda swans shaker you will get uh, almost many of my father's garden is of course a new book by him uh, i am glad that somebody uh, just said this name uh, shriya sharma okay yeah so uh, now uh, there is another work by him uh, which is very prominent at least i kind of consider as one of the prominent work in the indian uh, writing in english or in the new writing in indian english is uh, adivasi will not dance now adivasi will not dance is a, a small collection of uh, i think around 10 to 11 short stories is a is one of the brilliant uh, short story collections that the indian english uh, uh, has produced so uh, look up to this book do read this book uh, i'm sure that you guys are going to have a in in english now he of course kind of uh, i mean his his short stories do revolves around uh, the everyday life of the uh, sandal tribal community or the tribal community who live in the sandal parganas in both in uh, west bengal and in uh, uh, in jharkhand in that sense yeah now this is one of the writer that i kind of uh, want to flag here uh, to kind of argue that Uh, what is the new writing in the indian english or also the writing of the other in the indian english yeah now i'm sure that most of you will be familiar with the work of uh, 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 meena kandasami uh, so i'm not getting into uh, much about of course including her 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 fiction i mean her her novel her memoir as well as her uh, two collection of poems of course do a uh, a uh, uh, kind of shows the richness uh, in terms of the uh, aesthetics of the dalit bahujan writing in in english and it's it also shows the depth of of that particular uh, uh 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 writing in english in that sense yeah now a uh, third person whom i want to talk about here is chandra mohan chandra mohan uh i'm not sure how many of you ha have heard about chandra mohan chandra mohan is a poet who sits in in the capital city of uh, of kerala in trivandrum uh he is a very well known uh, dalit poet i'm sure most of you might not know about him or his work now this is also an opportunity for you guys to kind of uh, look up to some of the work or the the poems that he kind of write uh so he do also i mean he, he do have i think uh two to three collection of poems uh, one of them is titled as uh, letters to namdev dasal uh, namdev dasal of course was one of the legendary dalit uh, 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 not only writer but a figure uh, within the within maharashtra uh, so uh, this is also uh, an important name for you guys to kind of think think about when i say writing of the other now of course another name was sunny uh anis salim that i was talking about of course uh, some of you did did mention some of the work by them now what is what is different here what is what is peculiar here what is what is distinctively uh, unique uh, in the writing that many of these people these new people who produce is that their aesthetics is different their methodology is different and the way in which how they treat uh, their subjectivities for example the subjectivity of dalithood subjectivity of womanhood in that sense uh, the subjectivity of a muslim in that sense for example often if you look at i mean i don't know if you guys have looked at the the this book uh, small town c the the glossary of 
of small town C uh, is at the beginning of this particular novel, where, where I think after uh, Arundhati Roy, of course Arundhati Roy did did use some of the Malayalam words uh, in the word of small thing things. After that, of course, we have Anis Salim who use uh, who use very uh, very Muslim or very Malabar uh, kind of Malayalam. Uh, he introduces he kind of introduces for the first time to the english speaking world uh, some words for example he used wapa he also used this word called wapuma uh, 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 wapuma will be i think uh, father's mother right father's mother so umma even i mean the the very colloquial expression for uh, mother in the Malabar part, uh, you know, yeah. So, so these are the new kind of uh, work uh, that is coming in uh, from, let's say, uh, I mean, it's not for a long time now, but these are very, very new work uh, that are coming in. Now, we also have, for example, let's say we also have a very strong political expression that coming from, uh, particularly from LGBTQ communities, yeah from queer communities. We do have, for example, we do have uh, poets like Akhil Katyal. Uh, there, there is this particular new anthology which came in English uh, very recently from South Asia by uh, queer, queer poets uh, who uh, do kind of make uh, queer expression in poetry. Yeah. So this is also, uh, uh, you know, this is also uh, a kind of expression uh, that is very new uh, for the Indian English literary world or the Indian English literary imagination. Now, uh, so this is the new kind of uh, literature. This is the new kind of people who are coming in. This is also the new kind of uh, methodology uh, that people write about, write from. This is also the new kind of aesthetics uh, within in the literature that is now coming in uh, to the world of English writing in India. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, this is kind of an argument that I want to make here. Of course, I did uh, talked about the initial uh, history of uh, writing in English. Then I did looked at uh, vernacular writing, and I did distinguished the general writing and the Dalit Bahujan uh, slash slash writing in that. And now what we have is both, for example, we, ha we have, can any of you tell me, for example, there are uh, many of you uh, who are, uh, who are Malayalis here. Uh, how many uh, Adivasi poets uh, in Malayalam do you know? Or do you know any Adivasi poet in Malayalam? Somebody is asking, but I want to know you are a Malayali. I will answer this question later. Okay. Uh, can any of you tell me uh, an Adivasi poet from Malayalam? I mean, I, I kind of assume that we have a we have more than uh, more than sixty percent of this particular meeting who are who are Malus. Nobody. Okay, so I I kind of want to also tell you guys that see look there are uh, there are Adivasi youth from Kerala who are writing. Uh, please look up to what is going on in the Malayalam literature now, or what is going on in the Malayalam poetry, the new Malayalam poetry, written by uh, first generation Adivasi uh, youngsters uh, also now. Yeah, so please look up to some of these things. This is the new. Uh, uh, you know, this is the new wave of writing that is happening in almost all languages. For example, uh, uh, in the the uh, Yuva Puraskar of Sahitya Academy for Hindi last year went to this particular Adivasi uh, writer uh, called Anuj Lagoon. Anuj Anuj is a uh, I think Anuj is a Sandali poet. Sandal is a tribal community in West Bengal uh, who teaches in the Central University of uh, Central University of uh, Bihar, I suppose, in Patna. Anyways, you know, so uh, there is this 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 new new literary expression that is coming in uh, in all the languages, 
and this is reflecting more or less in the language of english as well of course he, english is one of the elite uh, relatively uh, difficult to achieve a capability to write in this particular language also because it become very difficult to i mean for, for example for somebody who have not had an had, a, had an anglo saxon education uh, or an, even an english literature training it become very difficult for people to kind of express in english so uh, that become uh, something very uh, difficult and also different so now this is the new kind of writing that is coming of course there, there are many other names that i mean I, i don't want to kind of get into names and their work and what do they talk about but uh, many of these names of course you guys can look at now some of you have mentioned here uh, the work of people like kancha elaya and i think some other non fiction work also came here of course they are also uh, one of the significant theoretical or historical contributions in the line that i was kind of talking about for example kanja elaya do theorize uh, what is knowledge where does the knowledge come from and what is the contribution of these particular communities for example he do talk about how did this knowledge of eating that came from or how we absorbed this particular uh knowledge systems from tribal communities who lived in the hills and then later people who live in the plains kind of appropriated this particular uh system or the knowledge or traditions or science as he kind of call it okay i mean i, I should not be talking about kanjaliya here uh, i mean I, i'm here to talk about the literary work so this is kind of my uh, larger argument uh, in this talk i i'm not sure if i have already exceeded my time uh so what i now would like to do is that i would like to uh read uh, some poems i just want to know uh, how long i can take i uh, i have some of some of my own poems and i also want to read you guys uh from the book by namdev dasal who is a uh one of the most landmark uh, uh dalit literary figure in maharashtra i want to uh, read his translate like one of the poems translation in english by dilip chitre one of the uh, legendary english indian english poet as well as translator who have been translating some of this this work i i just want to know uh, how much time i i can take you can take <laughs> sorry you can take ah uh, time no problem <laughs> okay. all right all right all right i hope all of you will be uh, i mean i i hope i'm not boring and I, i mean i'm not not forcing you all to kind of quit from this meeting anyway yeah you have time yes okay 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 thank you for that yeah so i think i did spend a good a uh, good amount of time uh, talking and theorizing about the literature so yeah so uh, how many of you how many of you know uh, namdev dasal how many of you know your namdev dasal just just tell me how many of you i mean some of you did write about his name so namdev dasal was one of the legendary literary as well as political uh, figure in maharashtra uh he was also uh, the founding member of of this particular political outfit called dalit panthers uh i'm not sure how many of you have heard this particular name called dalit panthers uh, but most of you must have heard about this particular uh, outfit called uh, black panthers movement in the us or in the west in that sense so uh, dalit panther movement uh, was something that was similar uh that was established uh, in india uh by uh, dominantly uh, articulating uh, dalit youth uh, in the country especially uh, in maharashtra in bombay uh by some of them so i mean i can see uh, none of you typing here so i'm kind of assuming that at least some some of you uh, do know now so i'm going to read uh, from i mean it's a poem of uh, of a uh, couple of pages i hope you guys don't get bored uh, anyway so this is from 
नामदेव डसाल्स फर्स्ट कलेक्शन ऑफ पोएम्स कॉल्ड गोल पिठा इट्स अ मराठी नेम व्हिच केम आउट इन 1972 एंड द टाइटल ऑफ दिस पोएम इज मैन यू शुड एक्सप्लोर मैन यू शुड एक्सप्लोर ओके सो लेट मी रीड दिस मैन यू शुड एक्सप्लोर योर सेल्फ to bits to to start with jive to a savage drum beat smoke hash smoke ganja chu opium bite lalpari guzel kanji boost if too broke down a point of cheapest dalda stay tipsy day and night stay tight round the clock cuss at one and all swear his mom's twat his sister's cunt abuse him slap him in the cheek and pumple him man you should keep a handy rampuri knife a dagger an axe a sword an iron rod a hockey stick a bamboo you should carry acid bulbs and such thing on you you should be ready to carve out anybody's innards without battling an eyelid commit murders and kill the sleeping ones turn humans into slaves whip their ashes with lash cook your beans on their bleeding backsides rob your next door neighbors bust banks fuck the mothers of money lenders and the sting switch cut the throat of your own kith and kin by the the conning them poison them jinx them you should hump everyone's mother or sister anywhere you can engage your dick with every messy you can find call nobody to all to be screwed call nobody to young nobody to green shag lay them one, one and all perform gang rapes on stage in public make shaw houses grow live on a pimp's cut cut the women's noses tight make them child naked on a donkey through the streets to shame them man one should dig up roads yank of bricks one should topple down steel lights smash up police stations and railway stations one should hull grandes one should drop hydrogen hydrogen bombs to raise literary societies schools colleges hospitals airports one should open the manholes and sewers to throw into them plato einstein archimedes socrates marx ashoka hitler camus sartre kafka bodio rimbard enzra pound hopkins goethe dostoevsky Mayakovsky, Ma- Maxim Gorky, Edison, Madison, Kalida- Kalidasa, Tukaram, Vyasa, Shakespeare, Janeshwar, and keep them rotting there with all their words. One should hang to death the descendants of Jews, the Pygamba, the Buddha, the Vishnu. One should crumble up temples, churches, mosques, sculptures, museums. One should blow with cannonballs all priests and inscribe. epigraphs with cloth soaked in their blood man one should tear off all pages of all sacred books in the world and give them to people for whipping shit of their arses when done remove sticks from anybody's fences and go in there to shit and piss and muck it up menstruate there what offense one sense to order to wind up the show raise the hell over the place from up to down and in between man you you should drink the human blood eat spit roast human flesh melt human fat and drink it smash the bones of your critics shacks on the hard stone block to get their marrow wage class wars caste wars communal wars party wars crusades world wars one should become totally savage ferocious and primitive one one should become devil make care and create anarchy launch a campaign for not growing food kill people and all sundry by starving them to death kill oneself too let disease thrive make all trees leafless take care that no bird ever sings man one should plan to die groaning and screaming in pain let all this grow into a tumor to fill the universe balloon up and burst all a nameless time to shrink after this they should stop calling one another names white or black brahmin kshatriya 
Vaishya or Shudra. Stop, stop creating political parties. Stop building property. Stop committing the crimes of not recognizing one's skin, not recognizing one's mother or sister. One should regard the sky as one's grandpa, the earth as one's grandma, and collude by them. Everybody should ba bask in mutual love. Man, one should act so bright as to make the sun and the moon seem pale. One should share each more sell of food with everyone else one should compass should sing only the song of man I can see a lot of living in between uh, so I mean I'm kind of assuming that uh, you know I mean maybe the the way in which uh, I was reading uh, was not very good yeah yes I have taken the muffler verses in my hand and I'm, I'm now going to read from this it was also uh, I mean, like one of the reasons why I was uh, reading uh, Dasal uh, was also because he's uh, one of the poet whom I kind of admire. Those who are interested in poetry, those who are inter interested in literature, uh, I kind of recommend that you guys do look at some of these poems or some of these work that come from, uh, you know, uh, from the world of uh, literature. Now, uh, forward this poem that you're reciting. See, some of these poems are available. This is, fuck. Some of these, some of these poems are, uh, I mean, I mean, like almost all these poems are from, uh, uh, Google these, you will get. I hope that will be uh, that will be much much more good. Uh, yeah. Okay. Just give me give me a second. Let me just uh, get into a couple of my favorite poems in this. Uh, uh, yes. So this poem is called uh, uh, "Where Do We Go?" Yeah. Where do we go? This poem was also written uh, specifically in the context of the protest that was going uh, after the the NRC was passed uh, 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 in the Parliament of India. Yeah. So uh, where do we go? Where do we go? So I have a three lines uh, at the beginning of this poem by uh, Mahmoud uh, Darwish. Uh, who is uh, the, le the, le the legendary uh, poet uh, uh, of the of uh, Palestine? Yeah. So I'm just reading out those th three lines by Mahmoud Darwish here. Where should we go after the last frontiers? Where should the birds fly after the last sky? Where should the plants sleep after the last breath of air? Now my poem starts. After the Isha Namaz, chanting prayers, sitting in her musalla, keeping her copy of Quran aside with tasbih, she asks, where do we go if our names are not in the list? Where do coconut trees go when their roots are declared illegal? How does hibiscus flower if you ask them, go back to where they come from? Can you ask tapioca to go back to Brazil? Do you ask tea and coffee to go back where they come from? Where do great pile hornbills go when you tell them monsoons are illegal to them? Where do mackerels and sardines go when you inform them they are illegal in the waters? Do Malabar elephant have identity card to enter the Masai Mara? Where do lion tail Macau go if they are asked to vacate Silent Valley? Can Mundagan and Punja paddy be cultivated in Saudi Arabia? Which water Gian Dianos swim if rivers are made illegal to them? Is there a list of snakes that are allowed only on Western Ghats? 
one which sees hasan ar fish if you ask him documents to enter the arabian sea where do we go the sword breaks my silence she asked me again where i reminded for you for your father adam was created with dirt from the surface of the earth you also will be returned to the earth we came from the soil we go to soil until then we live here so this is one of the poems uh, that i would like to uh, read i mean people who are in kerala uh, must be able to relate some of these local context that i am uh, kind of talking about uh, yeah now the second poem is a uh, uh, portrait of a bastard portrait of a bastard now this uh, i mean of course uh, 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 so my collection uh, the mapala verses has around 42 poems uh, out of which uh, more than half of them have come in uh, various journals and uh, publications in india and abroad Uh, so this has appeared in the uh, bombay review okay uh, uh, portrait of a bastard your collarbone protrudes like a somalian child and the arm muscles anemic but lungi from the malabar coast texture of your skin is the mixture of pulaya and cheruman converted to islam sweat with a scent beyond arabian sea from dubai abu dhabi or saudi arabia how do you speak english this well you guys rebelled against them and boycotted even their language how did you get this resilient yet deep eyes and rage somewhat remotely similar to palestinians and kashmiris you never you were never occupied your chin remotely resembles a clever north indian baniya man which disappear like a mirage they murmur you are a bastard in the confluence between the arabian coast and the malabar before portuguese and dutch mastered maritime do bastards have documents of the unholy nights for they and their children and their children and their children remain bastards forever so that's the second poem uh, that i have now uh, yeah so since this poem uh, i mean this book is titled as mapla verses i also would like to read a poem that is titled as mapla verses so i have three poems they are titled as mapla verses uh, there are three poems in this uh, uh, collection uh, as they are titled as mapla verses one of the poem is about mapla ramayana uh, there is something called mapla ramayanam in malayalam uh, uh, that is uh, the only uh, malayalam ram sorry only uh, muslim ramayanam that was written in the subcontinent so i kind of use uh, that uh, historical heritage to write Uh, about uh, the contemporary crisis of the muslims in the country uh, that is one and the second is of course uh, uh, yeah second poem i'm i'm going to read yeah so you guys will have a better sense of uh, uh, what i'm going to uh, talk about in the poem so i quote uh, milan kundera how many of you know milan kundera i mean most of you who read english literature must be familiar with milan kundera i'm assuming mm, okay 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 so uh, this poem uh, i quote uh, i quote milan kundera okay uh, i want to read uh, milan kundera's uh, quote uh, uh, at the beginning of the, this poem yeah the first step in liquidating a people is to erase its memory destroy its books its culture its history then have somebody write new books manufacture a new culture invent a new history before long that nation will begin to forget what it is and what it was the struggle of man against power 
is the struggle of memory against forgetting so this is one of the uh, phenomenal uh, statement that milan kundera says uh, in one of his work uh, so i kind of use that uh, in the initial part of my poem and here my poem starts yeah centuries ago even before baba sahib was born my ancestors search for caste annihilation they became mopla malik dinar came to my coast with light chairman perumal lich diya chairman dinar was first on the subcontinent two life merge between the mecca and ponani qadi muhammad waved songs when portuguese arrived like cannons on my disposal before anyone know anything about songs of resistance on my coast kunyali marakar variam kunat and ali musliar might sound just muslim names for you the lighthouses of self self respect and freedom for my land the brave children of eranad and valuvanad who poured their blood the land that showed chest to the cannons in the 1921 the brave children of ernard and valuvanad who poured their blood the land that showed chest to cannons in the 1921 my lullaby anglo mopla war my bedtime stories when my ancestors fought against the sons of the empire on which the sun never set on other sunset wagon massacre paintings were removed from tiru railway station how do you remove the wounds This land is built with the blood of my ancestors the water we drink their sweat with their blood on my nerves you stand stable on their dead bodies overnight i have become orphan at my own home or it wasn't home i now dig names graves and blood stains of my people to get all of us free certificates of loyalty i stand alone at the ghat of this country with all the documents and history for my citizenship approval yeah so i have read uh, three poems uh, i think uh, that's kind of enough and uh, i think i have taken a good enough uh, one hour uh, talking to you all uh, i once again thank uh, the organizers and i can still see some 70 people who are here in this meet it was 80 or 80 plus i can see 71 people including me i do th- sincerely thank all of you uh, for joining for uh, joining me here uh, if you have any questions if you have times uh, we can think about it we can uh, uh, talk about it uh, yeah so that's all from me thank you all thank you very much thank you very much for having me thank you very much for giving um, i mean inviting me for this and also thank you so much for listening me and thank you uh, very much also to be a very uh, responsive uh, team of uh, people who kind of did give me uh, inputs in between thank you so much thank you very much dr ajmal khan for giving us an uh, enlightening or rather an insightful lecture on new writings in english and exposing uh, a, a number of writers uh, with which we are not that much familiar with mm-hmm. and especially reading from your uh, you know collection of mapla verses too uh, the poems were really interesting and uh, it was up to an extent we could say that you know it carries all the flavors of malabar region or rather the you know predicament of the community right now on behalf of the organizing committee i invite shahadia chukan third semester ma english to deliver vote of thanks thank you so i have put up a link to my book if any of you are really keen about getting a copy of the book you are free to get it yeah thank you Shahadia, are you there? Yes, sir. I'm here. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. 
a very good evening to all of you uh, that was really a fantastic talk and i think this was such an enlightening session for all the participants over here so uh, here i'm so grateful to mention my deep sense of appreciation to dr ajmal khan for his true words on poetry on the other, uh, on the topic uh, poetry on the other new writing in english further i am very happy to uh, thank uh, the team of history department and research club of khm unity women's college for conducting such a tremendous session as a series of talk and i may uh, like to acknowledge my gratitude to the teachers students and all the participants uh, who have joined for today's session thank you thank you one and all Kumali sir, thank you. So we will uh, meet you again uh, on coming tenth of uh, uh, this month, like Saturday at seven p.m. in the evening. Right? Till then, bye bye.